Hello there, Rebel and Red followers. This is Brian from HostelFork.com, and it's the end of January 2015, which means if any of you weren't living under a rock, you have seen the announcement about Red's half million dollars of funding, which is very exciting. I have an announcement that is not necessarily as exciting, but I still think it's exciting, which is that I've been working the last couple of months on a C++ binding for Rebel and Red, and it currently uh, works against Rebel, but uh, it's getting prepared to work with Red. So that's something that should come along in the future here somewhere. And I, it's called Ren CPP because of an effort that you may remember from Rebelec and some others who uh, wanted to Ren to be the name kind of used to describe uh, when uh, Rebel and Red were being used for a data exchange format. So kind of a parallel to JSON uh, to to bring that under the umbrella of the name Wren and have readers and writers for Wren. And so this is sort of a first step in that uh, C++. And I thought it's a good it's a good name. I want to thank up front everybody who's been helping build it, all the people on the chat room, and uh, especially Morwen, a young C++ programmer who's come to lend his efforts to the project. And uh, I wanted to thank him right up front because I know he doesn't like long videos. so. You might not make it all the way to the end of this one. And what does it do? Well, it establishes a, a class hierarchy. It doesn't use virtual dispatch, which is kind of a, a tricky aspect to it, but it, in, in terms of over the long run, that's going to be helpful. It has a number of, of tricks un, up its sleeve with that. You can see here, for instance, forming a, a, a word out of a, a string literal or perhaps forming a block out of a mixture of um, string literals that represent loadable runs of code uh, that you can then go and intersperse with uh, C++ variables that are holding values of different types. And here you see it uh, automatically detecting that the return type of, a, of the calling the runtime with some, you know, to say parse this, this C++ string that we turn into a, a value for rebel here. And uh, then we can test that you know, just like we can test in Rebel for things that are not none and uh, not false that qualify for the true branch. Uh, so if this parse were to work, then we see success and target was Ren C++ binding. Um, and it, you might not know whether this is going to be a, a big uh, draw for C++ programmers, but it might be. Uh, I've actually found this to be pretty interesting uh, to use just in the middle of what would have been a lot of C++ code. I can still be coding in C++ and have a little bit of inline uh, Rebel. But the thing that I thought was going to be a bigger deal, which is a big deal, was the ability to write functionality in C++ and then uh, export that out uh, pretty easily, uh, about as easily as I could think of to, to make it, and more one spend a bunch of time on figuring out some of the technicals, um, which was to be able to just write out your spec block up here um, and then give a function and have it automatically you know wrap up and and unpack the parameters so that you can communicate with rebel or red and it's kind of a bend over backwards compatibility thing it would be a lot easier if uh, if they were written in C++ but uh, even though they're not we managed to get this uh, down to a, a pretty nice science so that's uh, been pretty pretty amazing I think and I want to show you a demo that I made with it now what it is is it's a graphical console for rebel or red when it gets its red and CPP binding fleshed out and the reason I called it Ren garden is because I just started thinking of it as a as a garden uh, it was originally workbench but that's kind of boring and and now uh, it's it's kind of an ecology for features and I can show you what some of them are Let's uh, use Control Plus to make the text a little bigger for you to see. And, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to do a console is because it was something I could actually use. And also, uh, there were a lot of issues that I realized had to be thought through that a console brings to the forefront, such as how do you handle escape? You know, how, how does that signal get communicated? And you can't do it the same way that the current console does because that's... Uh, going on control C and that stuff isn't the way it 
is going to work here and you want to keep the GUI responsive so it has a thread and then the request comes from that thread. So this is actually the first multi-threaded Rebel program, I think, but it doesn't run two bodies of Rebel code at the same time uh, because it can't. It's not really safe to do that in the general case until some kind of uh, work is done on that, but Red should be able to. And I wanted to do some kind of wow features. Uh, and the first one I thought was, well, what about if we had something that would let you watch a variable? So I could watch x, watch y, x, uh, you know, plus plus x. And you can see that it's also keeping track of when a variable changes, gives you a little selection alert on that, which is, which is nice. And I thought, it's a dialect, and here we are. Why not start thinking through cool features? Like, what about evaluation? So that if you use a paren, it will evaluate every time. And uh, so you see that uh, getting thrown in there. And, uh, you know, if you come over here and you can right click, you can say, oh, duplicate this. And then you can say, freeze this one. So you can freeze the state of a variable. And, um, and also to be able to query for the value. So if I say watch three, it doesn't watch the value three, that wouldn't be very useful, but it goes into slot three and gives you whatever's in the value slot there. And so you can see me, I change Y to a thousand, and you can see this captured one doesn't change. Maybe I wanna remember what that was so I can label it like before. And then the dialect can also do queries on things like that, like say watch before. So it uses tag I as a type in order to do the queries. You know, your imagination of, of what you might want to do in terms of scripting and debugging could be different from mine, and uh, it'd be great to have more input on this, but I can also say things like watch minus three, and that'll actually give me the value uh, from slot three and then delete that watch. So um, you see a lot of interesting possibilities here and you can script this. It's not, this is not something, you know, this is a real function that you can just call. Uh, and it looks a bit like a native because all these, you know, some of these QT things are, you know, they're done in the C++ code. So you're not gonna be able to see the source code for this function, but you will see the uh, spec block as you would remember it from there. And other features where we start taking these kind of nice widgets that Qt has on all the platforms with a with a really well documented API what about something like a tab so if I hit control T new tab new tab and then to say that we can have different watch lists per per tab but it's not just different uh, um, it's not just a different watch list it's it's also in its own context so we didn't overwrite the other tabs uh, values so I can still come back here and say print X and it's still 11 over there, whereas it's 10 over here. And that's a feature that RenCPP got me to go and push on in Rebel that wasn't really uh, finished. It, it had to have errors and it didn't work to have multiple contexts uh, to be used for binding like this. Uh, that you could copy, you know, contexts like the user context. And so, like I say, don't get too excited in terms of this suddenly meaning that Rebel is is parallel somehow that you can run things in all these tabs, uh, it will tell you, you know, you're running in another tab, so you you can't run in this one until that's over. But uh, like I say, we hope to see the, you know, the, the technical uh, underpinnings of, of RED to be able to do that kind of thing out of the box, we would presume. To turn off the watches and talk about something that went away, LS. I always thought that LS was a, 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 a Unixism that had crept into the, the literacy uh, so that's gone. But what I did do was come up with a shell dialect. So I can actually type shell like ls-alf and it will list the, the files in, in the directory by, by turning that into a string. And you can see I can change the uh, settings. Shorthand to just shell ls, it'll uh, turn that word into a string and send it to the shell. And if you want to know how it's working, it actually has a, a meta switch that you can do to, to talk to it. So let's say I'm going to tell it I want test on. So I could say something like shell. Um, what would you do if I said ls reverse uh, dash f or fla dash, you know, instead. 
And so you can see that it does uh, substitutions. Um, other things, feature ideas I had were like, you know, shell, foo, start at CPP. And you wind up with that. Or because it would be, you know, you can't do dollar foo unless you escape into strings, which you, which you can do. But that makes it nice to have a get word uh, to, to, to be the dollar foo. And if you're on Windows, it does the right thing as well. So it's, uh, it's an experiment, and it's pretty interesting. And not only is it kind of interesting, uh, let's go ahead and turn test off, it, um, it's persistent. So if I say something like shell foo uh, 100, and then I say shell uh, echo colon foo, what's actually happening is that this shell process, instead of being launched anew every time, is uh, it's actually, I use the QT process API and it's persistent. It's talking to it, uh, automating it over the command line. So you're keeping your state, you know, what directory you're in, what your environment variables are set to. So that's fun. But here's something else that's fun. Uh, if the console is the default evaluator, um, so every time you see me doing something, it looks a lot like the do dialect, but that's because uh, the console function. Uh, when it gets a block, it just does uh, do on that block. However, I can switch in other single arity uh, functions to become my uh, active command line. So if I say console colon shell, that says get the shell function, and now uh, you know ask you know it asks through a protocol what it wants the prompt to be, and it says in this case shell. And then every evaluation you run is in shell. So uh, until you hit escape twice, and then you get out of it. And in fact, the shell command itself has been uh, uses the same trick as the uh, help command does to notice when it's actually n zero arity, and then it calls that for you. So uh, shell uh, has a convenient way to get into shell mode where you can. You're just typing, and this is all interpreted in that shell dialect. And you saw that meta switch I showed you before. Well, if you want to give a meta command here, what you do is you hit control space, prompt changes, and I can say something like test on. And then I can say on my next line, foo is 10, and it'll tell me what it's going to send to the shell. And if I want to turn uh, test mode off, I just control space, test off. And now shell is back to normal. This ability to write your own uh, hooks, your own functions, you, you know, you can even use a function that doesn't have a meta refinement. So if I said something like console get me print, because print takes a block, right? Now we're going to get something like hello 3 plus 4 world, and it's going to go through printing. Um, just with a little question mark to tell you I don't know what that is. So what I'm going to show you here is a little idea of something you might write. I'm also going to show you getting into multi-line mode. I hit shift enter to put, put myself into it. And now let's paste this. Uh, it's a time function. And uh, you're probably already pretty happy to see that, that yes, uh, multi-line editing works and not only works, but that um, it doesn't have weird confusing bra brackets in there. It's just uh, you just edit. <laughs> and you can select and jump around with all the usual editing commands that you might like to do. But what this function does is it, it shows off how, how the meta protocol works to ask for a prompt and to even ask for a banner so that you know, it's possible for the dialect to give you some little help information when it starts up. And all this one is doing is it's uh, timing the command, and then it's sending you know, the console currently, if you give it a string, it will display that string in the status bar. So if I, uh, you can use enter a few times at the end to, to close a multi-line, or you can use control enter if you want. So now, every time I say something like print hello, uh, you'll get a, oh, I have to plug it in, sorry. <laughs> console colon t uh, gets timed. So now, the timed console dialect has turned itself on, and now if I say something like print hello, uh, we'll get 
a measurement of how uh, quickly the command was completed. So you can plug in, you know, any function that you write like this, and uh, it's pretty pretty cool. And then you can write the the meta controls for for what you want to do with it. That's a nice example. But uh, let me also show you something else which I haven't shown you yet. We can actually undo. Um, you can kind of go back up through history. It'll put you uh, there so you can edit. If you had a selection and then you did an evaluation, like say with Control Enter, and you undo, you actually get your selection back. So, um, so that's nice as well. And I've, I haven't really seen uh, consoles that do this particularly well. It's got a got a couple bugs, but but it's uh, reasonably good. So you have undo, redo, multi-line, uh, the ability to convert, like if I'm typing along and I have some uh, selection on the line and I hit shift enter, it, it will actually convert it uh, so that you can do that easily. But anyway, let me show you, um, I guess, uh, a, a cool console meta feature. So if I say console meta, um, buffer hello you can load text into the editing buffer so this could be a way to uh, make it so that you could have a you know loading a, a function in to edit it also let's do the console meta commands which we can do with control space as well let's say that we were going to say that you wanted to do buffer and then something like hello space and that and then selection and then space world. Oh, it's two. Like that. And then it's a it's a dialect. And that dialect lets you specify the start and end points of a selection and it's using uh, combine. So I should mention of course that I have put in the box things that I think should be there. Uh, combine is here. So you have hello if one is greater than two. Uh, you know, evil world. But uh, so not only is combine in the box, but I've based print on combine. So you have combined features. Um, so I could say something like print with uh, hello, friend, garden, world. And then uh, do something like comma and space which will be combined so you you get the combined features which if you remember that's all these sort of uh, curious things like a being foo uh, bar and then uh, b being buzz a and then print a b a or something like that and so this uh, ability to use sub little sub programs of, of blocks kind of the way that you would use parse rules uh, that can can nest you can use print rules that nest and having all the features that have been described in and combine and also I never liked print I thought that was bad so print only is this surrogate for uh, for that which doesn't do a new line and it doesn't do spaces it's like just print don't uh, don't throw those things in. And I wanted to keep this demo uh, inside of 20 minutes, so I'm not going to talk about every little thing I could talk about, which is covered in cure code tickets or other proposals of things that we could be doing, like an improved four or uh, stuff like that. But that's all stuff people can get involved in here that doesn't um, need uh, C++ programming and the C++ programming, I think, is pretty accessible even. It's, it comments uh, pretty copiously in some places. Um, but here you see, for instance, that little selection dialect that the console calls out to. You can go read the, the code for the actual uh, binding and for the examples and, and, and you know, help write tests or you know, anything. Just anything would help. And we'd like to get these, get it packaged. As I said, people have been running it on multiple platforms. So here I have it in a, you know, Windows XP VM with a poorly scaling font for some reason. But I don't really know that much about such things. But uh, yeah, and over here, if you say shell dir, 
you know it's it, it's uh, running the, the the windows console so a lot of places to study how to do those things better more on the platforms we've got 64-bit mac built the other day and i'll close by showing you a feature which um it comes in handy every now and again when it crashes but the gui is still active i have a little tolerance i got this idea from my chromebook which is that if you hold start holding down escape it'll start to fade and if you release it it'll it'll come back into view but if you hold it down and make it fade it'll quit <laughs> so close with that and uh, get in touch if you have things to say <laughs>